efforts on strategic ICBM systems has expanded to include short and mid-range ballistic missile threats. The Defense Support Program maintains the legacy Cold War monitoring to warn of ICBM missile launches against the U.S. The replacement program is the Space-Based Infrared System, or SIBRS, which has already provided two infrared sensor payloads in highly elliptical orbits, or HEO. The SIBRS program is also deploying multiple spacecraft into Geosynchronous Earth Orbit, or GEO. Each has two independent infrared sensors. One is a scanner dedicated to missile warning with full Earth monitoring. The other sensor is a taskable starer that can focus on selected regions. Each pair of sensors acts simultaneously and independently of each other, providing a robust, taskable infrared platform. SIBRS is the nation's next generation of space-based infrared surveillance. The program has already proven its value with successful HEO payloads on orbit. With deployment of the GEO spacecraft, SIBRS will be an unprecedented resource as the nation's global, taskable, and persistent infrared monitoring sentinel. Ten minutes, thirty. This is Atlas Mission Control at all plus ten minutes, thirty-seven seconds into the flight. Uh, the vehicle is continuing to operate as expected. The launch vehicle right now is at 170 nautical miles altitude and 1,497 miles downrange from Cape Canaveral, traveling at a velocity of 13,837 miles an hour. And the mission is currently in the first of two Centaur burns. This first burn is 11 minutes and 13 seconds. And we are uh, continuing in this burn. Uh, again, uh, we're continuing as expected. Uh, we'll go back to Marty Malinowski to hear the uh, Miko 1. 14,093 miles per hour. Just under four minutes remain in this first burn of Centaur. All systems continue to operate as expected. Centaur PU is now controlling near nominal. Mass error is very small. RL10 chamber pressure, LOX pump discharge, and fuel venturi inlet pressures are within parameter for the set MR. Our tank pressures are stable. Storage bottle pressures, bus and battery voltages are also in in band for this point in the mission. Four minutes, pardon me, three minutes remaining in this first part of Centaur. Current altitude is 176 miles, downrange distance 2,083 miles. Current velocity is 15,749. Two minutes to Miko. Centaur systems continue to operate well. 
Again, PU is controlling air nominal MR. Mass air is very small. Continue to see our RCS thermal conditioning firings. One minute to Miko. And we have IAP vanish, center is now orbital. P is being commander to fixed angles in preparation for Miko. Engine response looks appropriate. And we have Miko. Engine shutdown looks good. We have four S settling on. FTS has been disabled. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 15 minutes, 45 seconds into the flight. And we've just heard Marty Malinowski confirm uh, cut off a of Centaur main engine. So our first burn now complete. That 11 minute, 13 second burn is complete. We're in an 8 minute. 45 second coast phase, uh, which will be then be followed by a second burn of the Centaur upper stage that will last 3 minutes 53 seconds. The vehicle now is at uh, an altitude of 124 nautical miles. Distance downrange is 2,871 miles, uh, miles downrange from Cape Canaveral and traveling at a velocity of 17,875 miles an hour. Our next event again will be the Centaur main engine start number two. That event is scheduled to take place at about 24 minutes into the flight or about eight minutes from now. And while we wait for the next event, let's take a look at another video describing the SIBR's capability. The capabilities of this team, the expertise that reside within this mission area across our industry workforce is remarkable. With all the other previous sensors, they would only see an area of the Earth once every 10 seconds. And we're gonna see it all the time. The GEO-1 launch is an exciting new beginning to geostationary persistent missile warning and missile defense. Sivers is, it's the big dog on campus. You have to keep in mind that this is a system that saves lives, not just theoretically, it actually saves lives. So if there's any threat against the United States will be there, we'll be watching, we'll be ready. The headlines tell it all. Maintaining a legacy of over 40 years of vigilant surveillance with both the Defense Support Program and now with the Space-Based Infrared System Program, Air Force Space Command provides its first 24 by 7 persistent overhead surveillance capability that is taskable. And that's the unique thing about the Cyber system is, is that I can task it to cover any region of the Earth at any moment in time, providing the key and essential information for combatant commanders. Folks around the, the nation uh, depend on this system to be there to be the first line of defense on understanding what things may be coming to harm our nation. It's a new generation of data. It's something they've never seen before and blowing them away in terms of capability and things that we can see that we didn't really know we're going to be able to see and people understand the real protection and the, the surveillance capabilities that we need to keep our nation safe. When you're a part of a team that cares so much, 
about a mission that is so important to the nation. We can't be a team without those folks. And to be a part of something so large. It is a huge accomplishment and one that is a long time coming. I have never been surrounded by such a group of talented and motivated and experienced individuals working so hard. The team has overcome a lot of really challenging issues. I think right now you have, you have that group that's been fire tested and, and they're very dedicated to the, the mission. And you kind of feel that among the people, there's kind of an excitement. The team's gelling and we're looking forward to getting this constellation fully capable. Information flow these days, especially from our space assets, is something that the warfighters rely upon. They know that the Air Force will be there to deliver it. We all have a different role in the fight. Some are deployed, some get to do it from the states. And I think this is our contribution to help that fight because we all have one mission in mind and it's to keep our nation safe. The uh, officers who wear the uniform, the men and women who, uh, who work in the program office, who have elected that as their career, these are very dedicated, capable individuals and uh, one of the highlights of the job is the opportunity to work with them. It's really the dawn of a new era. Capability will be unprecedented. It'll be game-changing, uh, revolutionary. Cybers has been through a lot of challenging times, and I think we've really turned the corner here. When you have a chance to work with a team that has that level of dedication that just does what it takes in order to make the system work, you, you really develop an appreciation for how it's not about one person. It's not just about you know, someone in a leadership position making things happen. That's not the way this program works. It's the teams of hundreds of people all coming together, all with that common view and vision that are gonna make this successful, and are. It's an exciting day here for Team Sibbers. The Geo-1 satellite is now ready for transfer from Sunnyvale, California to Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. It was real when they pulled the satellite out of the factory to the ramp and loaded it on the airplane, but when it, when it actually arrives here and we, and we see the airplane on the approach, it's, it's really going to kick in. Man. Just knowing that you had the spacecraft underneath you and we were actually trekking across the country and getting it to the Cape to start launch processing, in your mind it's almost surreal. here at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. It, it takes a lot of work to get to this point, a lot, a lot of really hard work. It, it has not been easy, uh, but we're here and we're ready to do it. Well, I'm just elated. This was a wonderful day, a wonderful flight. I'd really like to thank uh, Team AMC, Air Mobility Command. We had a very professional crew, did an awesome job for us, had a very smooth flight. This is the beginning of the Assumers era, and the, the team really performed very, very well, so couldn't be happier. The container housing the Geo-1 satellite has now made its way from the flight line to the spacecraft processing area. Here, it will be put to the test and readied for the big day. They'll prepare all the equipment to take the satellite out of its shipping container, uh, make sure the clean room is, is safe and at the right conditions to unload the satellite. They'll do one test uh, for about two weeks to check it out and make sure nothing was damaged during shipment uh, and then we'll prepare the satellite for fueling. I think on the day of launch it'll actually be, I don't even know that there'll be words to describe it. Day of launch is going to be one of those moments that it's a sigh of relief, it's that culmination of all of your work that you've done. Such a proud accomplishment that we've been able to work so hard for for so long. There has been a lot of work that's gone into this program. There's been a lot of emotions that have gone through this program. Just blood, sweat, and tears put into this mission. And to finally see it launch, it, I think it's gonna be pretty emotional for a lot of people. I'm extremely humbled and honored to be leading such an incredible program team. Uh, the team that we have are really dedicated to a common vision. They're all patriots. I'm very, very proud uh, to be associated with such experts uh, dedicated to a common vision and securing the future of our nation.
This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 23 minutes, 48 seconds and counting. We're just moments away from Centaur main engine start number two, the second burn.